traveling along a coral reef, we witness an explosion of colors, vibrant animals, amazing sights to behold. For nearly 400 million years, this ecosystem has been developing under the sea. When entering the ocean, most people see just what is below the surface. Yet, to the trained eye, an entirely different world is revealed. To understand interactions between animals, we need to understand how animals relate to one another. Camouflage plays a crucial role in most species. Animals throughout the animal kingdom use cryptic or concealing coloration to become invisible within their environment, often through deception. A lionfish appears to use disruptive coloration to hunt, sometimes lying in wait for unsuspecting bait, other times in full display. A quick look and one sees a turtle swimming in the sea. Yet, when you view them from afar, through the eyes of camouflage, they are just a mottled mass resembling the background on a reef. Sea creatures have evolved and adapted for survival. Simply put, they want to get enough food to eat while trying not to get eaten. And they need to, in order to reproduce successfully. After all, for any animal to reach sexual maturity, they must survive. And yet, the queen of camouflage on the reef is the cuttlefish. A member of the cephalopod class, this female can use her body colorations with bewildering diversity. These creatures use all the tricks in the trade of camouflage, making them true masters of disguise. Yet, as one of the most intelligent invertebrates, they cannot even tell the difference between a male and a female without visual cues. You heard correctly. The males have a zebra striping on their arms. They flare when approaching one another. The female does not have this ability. This is how one knows whom to mate with or whom to fight. So this is Sheila, the Australian name for a female. And as we follow her along the reef, she changes the color and texture of her skin thousands of times. Camouflage reigns supreme in the animal kingdom. This Sheila just caught a fish and is trying to finish off her meal when along comes a small male. We will call him Sneaky and seeing that she is alone, immediately he wants to mate her. You see, his size matters. Male cuttlefish use very aggressive fighting displays with one another to vie for the role as protector of the female. The smaller ones can only mate with the females when the larger males are not around. But this Sheila, just wants to finish her meal and does not want to mate. But this small male will not give up. He knows that if he keeps trying, he might just get lucky. Sound familiar? Female cuttlefish may hold anywhere from five to 12 different male sperm packets and choose among all of them when fertilizing and laying eggs. After more than 30 minutes, this female has finally finished her meal. And it is like magic. She darts off to lay her eggs. Cuttlefish have great olfactory sensors. She has probably picked up a scent from the water and knows exactly which coral head she wants to go to lay her eggs. As she approaches the area, a large cuttlefish approaches. And he does what males do. He shows off. The female does not have the zebra striping capability on her arms. So this is how the male finds out if this cuttlefish is a female or a male. 
Now that the male knows he has a female in his company, he is going to try everything he can to get lucky. He displays. There are other males lurking in the distance. He will get into visual and aggressive displays if they come too close to his girl. The female approaches the egg-laying coral head and is not interested in him. She just wants to lay her eggs. Yet the male just picked up his date and does not want her to lay eggs because he has not mated with her. He wants his spermatophore packets to be fresh inside for fertilization. So he will not let her approach the coral head to lay her eggs. They go back and forth. Ah, oh, and now he is off in her defense. Another male has come onto the scene to try and mate with the queen. So her suitor goes to fight, leaving her helpless? I dare say not. No, this queen of the reef will often choose multiple mates. She is just fine left on her own. So, what do you do when you're a small guy? You wait patiently on the outskirts until the big males are busy fighting and you come in for the sneak attack in the mating game. This little guy does not want to get into a fight. He knows he will lose. But this female doesn't want anything to do with him. You can tell from her body language and the messages she is sending through her skin. Leave me alone. This female has all the control. Males try to mate with her all day long, but she has to signal, yes, I want you to. The guys, they just want her, but it is up to her to decide. He displays, come on, you know you want to pick me. And she is not responsive. But slowly, he wins her over as he tickles her arms. And she sends him the signal. Okay then, you will get your genes into the gene pool. And they mate. It is absolutely a sight to see. The males have a specialized arm for transferring the sperm packets into the female's receptor. Watch closely and you will see this happen. Once they are finished, she will arrange the newly placed packets and begin to lay her eggs. Hopefully without further disruption, because she has lots of work to do now. She will lay dozens of eggs and fertilize from a number of different males. These independent animals spend their entire lives alone on the reef. They only come together towards the end of their life once they reach sexual maturity. Cuttlefish have a genetically programmed life. They live fast and die young. So with an untrained eye, you may see the colors of the reef. But when you can see with the vision of the animals, a whole new world is revealed. The Queen of Camouflage.